All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan battle video. So the Tech LR Super Saiyan 2 Gohan banner is going to be dropping on both Global and JP in about 7 hours from the time this video comes out. And as I always like to do for new banners, especially on the Global side, today we're going to have a quick discussion to hopefully help you guys decide whether or not you want to spend your hard-earned Dragon Stones to summon on this banner and try to pull Gohan, or if you should be saving them for something else in the near future. Now, usually to accomplish this, we take a look at the details for the new unit, watch all of his animations together, and also go over the actual banner to determine you know, how good it actually is, right? But this video is going to be a little bit different from some of the previous ones because unlike the past where we've had a JP banner to use as a reference, uh, this Gohan is going to be a simultaneous release on both sides, right? Which means that at this point in time, there actually isn't a banner to look at. But what we can do is assume that this banner is going to be very similar to the previous Christmas banners, especially the one from last year, which was uh, this one right here for the LR Spirit Bomb Absorbed Goku. And for those of you that remember this banner, you would know that there were some very obvious pros and cons to it. Okay, so a couple qualities that you should know about this banner. Number one, it's technically a legendary summon banner. There aren't any um, Dokkan Festival exclusive units on it, but it's a double rates banner. So instead of the typical 10% SSR rate, it's going to be 20% SSR rate. Instead of 5% for featured SSRs, it's going to be 10% for featured SSRs. In addition, every single time you do a multi, you'll get a bonus Christmas themed Kai. I mean, obviously it's not a Kai, but it has the same effect of raising unit super attacks. And last year, we got a Santa Goku for each multi, but this year it's going to be a Santa Kid Gohan and Icarus. So those are basically all the important qualities you guys need to know about these Christmas banners, aside from, of course, the featured units. And taking a look at this one, there were 12 featured SSRs last year, and uh, it was kind of rough, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, even by legendary summon standards, this featured pool was not great, and unfortunately, I do expect the Gohan banner this year, that's gonna come out in a couple hours, to be very similar, in the sense that, aside from the you know new featured LR, everybody else in the featured pool is just kind of meh. But honestly, I think that's okay, because for the most part, when it comes to legendary summon banners, the only unit that most people care about is the featured LR. And for this one, it's going to be double rates, which means that instead of the normal like 0.4% featured rate for the LR, it's going to be about 0.8, right? And of course, you also have a higher chance of pulling LRs in the unfeatured pool with a 20% overall SSR rate. So in terms of legendary summon banners or just banners like this, this one's actually pretty freaking good, right? Because on top of the better rates and the featured LR, you're also going to be getting a bonus Kai for each multi. So um, I would say this banner is actually going to be better than the one that a lot of people were expecting for Global, which was the Tech LR Jiren banner, which literally would have been just a regular legendary summon banner with, you know, normal rates, 5% featured, and it would have been much harder to pull the Jiren. But now, since the Gohan banner is going to be a Rising Dragon Carnival double rates banner, your chances of actually pulling the Gohan is going to be much, much better. Like I said, about 0.8%, or maybe even a little bit higher compared to roughly 0.4% for the normal legendary summon banner. And of course, if you're in the mood for chasing some LRs outside of the, you know, Gohan, then you'll also have a better chance of pulling the unfeatured guys as well, right? So I don't think this banner is going to be too bad overall. I mean, just replace the Goku here with Gohan and also replace these guys with, uh, for global, probably Kale and Caliefla since their EZAs are finally dropping. And then for JP, most likely the uh, Int, Super Saiyan, Gohan, and the Kaoken Goku that are getting EZAs through the Hero Extermination event, right? And uh, the rest of the pool will probably be pretty similar. I mean, maybe different units, but kind of the same level of units, like some older EZA units maybe, and possibly some of the newer non dokkan Fest units that came with, you know, some of the recent dokkan Fest banners, right? And that's pretty much what the banner's gonna look like. Um, if I were to give it a rating right now, I would say like a solid 
6.5 out of 10. Still not amazing, but significantly better than uh, the average legendary summon banner. So that's a quick preview, if you will, for this Gohan banner. It could end up being different from what I said, but just based on the trend of the last couple of years, this is what we can probably expect. All right, so from there, we're gonna pop over to the official Dokkan Twitter page and watch the animations for this new Gohan. Let me just pop on my headphones real quick. And here we go. Dude, I love it. I love it. The OST and the voice lines and the animations all together is just it's so good, man. Now, I'm one of those people that was ready to summon as soon as I saw the animations alone. But if you need a little bit more uh, convincing, then let's pop over to the Dokkan Wiki and see his actual card details. Okay, so his leader skill is Movie Heroes Category Q plus 4. HP, attack, and defense plus 130%, or super attack types, key plus 4. HP, attack, and defense plus 100%. Super attack, 12 key, raises attack and defense for one turn, causes colossal damage, and greatly lowers the enemy's defense. And passive is raises defense for one turn, causes mega colossal damage, and massively lowers enemy's defense. His passive is attack and defense plus 58%, plus an additional key plus 1 per key sphere obtained, plus an additional attack and defense plus 7% per key sphere obtained, plus an additional attack plus 58% when performing an ultra super attack, medium chance of launching an additional super attack, plus an additional attack plus 59%, and attack becomes a critical hit when performing an ultra super attack if HP is 58% or less with a movie hero's category ally whose name includes Goku, youth excluded, on the team starting from the fifth turn from the start of battle once only. He also has an active skill, which gives him key plus 12 and attack plus 59% for one turn, and this can be activated when HP is 58% or less with a movie hero's category ally whose name includes Goku, youth excluded on the team starting from the fifth turn from start of battle once only, which essentially is the same condition as his passive right here to get the additional 59% attack and a guaranteed critical hit. And we've got some pretty interesting calculations down here. So his additional attack plus 58% when performing an ultra super attack is calculated separately for a total boost of attack plus 149.64% plus an additional attack plus 11.6% or sorry 11.06% per key sphere obtained. And then his active skill is also calculated separately and the additional 59% from his passive, which activates under the same condition, gives him a combined 445.15% attack with a guaranteed critical hit, plus an additional attack plus 24.15% per key sphere obtained. Now, of course, this is only for that one turn where you can activate the active skill and also get this part of the passive to proc. And in that instance, he becomes the hardest hitting unit in the entire game. But even without that, he still can be a very good unit, right? Like, I've seen a lot of people compare him to, you know, AGL LR Gohan in the sense that the conditions for his transformation were super, super restrictive and you almost never saw it. But I don't think this Gohan is actually as bad. I feel like these conditions are actually easier to meet than the AGL LR Gohan. I mean, First of all, there are quite a few movie heroes category Gokus in the game to run on the same team as this Gohan and proc this part of his passive and also the active skill. And even without this extra part and even without the active skill, 
he's still gonna hit really damn hard because he's still getting the attack and defense plus 58% plus the additional 58% attack plus the attack and defense plus 7% per key sphere obtained, the one extra key for every key sphere, and also the medium chance of launching an additional super, right? So take this part away and you still got a very, very good unit on your hands. Like I would compare him more to the LR Super Saiyan 2 Angel Vegeta who needs a Majin Buu Saga Goku to activate his entire kit, right? That Vegeta is still very good without the Majin Buu Saga Goku, he's just better with the Majin Buu Saga Goku. And this Gohan, I think, is exactly the same thing, where even if you can't run this Movie Heroes Goku on the same team with him, he's still gonna be very good. It's just that, obviously, he's gonna be even better with this Goku on the team, right? But to me, it's not as big of an issue as it is to some other people. And I still think he's an amazing unit. I would put him in my top five of the best units in the game right now easily. But of course, that's just my opinion. Let me know in the comments down below how you guys feel about him. And that is pretty much going to be today's video, guys. We've gone through the potential banner, or at least predicted what the banner is going to look like. We've taken a look at the animations, and we've also gone through the card details. In terms of my personal recommendation, I think that most players should probably feel okay about spending maybe a couple hundred stones, maybe like two to three hundred, four to six multis on this banner, test your luck a little bit and see if you can pull the Gohan. Worst comes to worst, you don't pull anything good, you're still going to end up with, you know, some extra Elder Kai's, right? And given the fact that it is going to be a double rates banner, it's actually pretty likely that you'll just accidentally pull an unfeatured LR at some point during your summons, you know? And I'll give you guys a quick look at the unfeatured pool here. We've got the LR Androids up here. We got the LR Godku, uh, Tech LR Broly, Kaelin Khalifla, GT Trio, LR Baby, Trunks and Mai, Goku and Frieza, LR Cell, uh, LR Bardock, LR Beerus, LR Bojack, Mighty Mask, Trunks, um, Goku Black and Zamasu, Majin Vegeta, the new Trollhan, because obviously he's been replaced by the new Gohan, right? So people are calling this guy Trollhan now, instead of the Int EZA one. And uh, we got Super Saiyan 3 Goku here. Uh, basically, I mean, there's no real point to like going over all of these. Basically, every non Dokkan Fest LR in the game should be available on this banner, including um, LR UI Goku, including Spirit Bomb Absorb Goku, and so on and so forth. So you have a chance to pull any of those guys on this banner from the unfeatured pool. And since it is double rates, it's going to be double the chance compared to an average legendary summon banner, right? And that is going to be today's video, guys. Now, before we go, I do want to remind everybody that we still have the step up banner on the horizon. Okay, so you still have to make this your priority. You still have to, I mean, this is for the average player. If you're a whale or if you've been playing for a very long time and you have all or most of the, you know, category leads and LRs in the game, then it doesn't really apply to you. But for the average player, especially if you're free to play, the New Year's Step Up banner is definitely the priority. Still save between four to 600 stones if you plan to do all three rounds on the Step Up banner for three guaranteed LRs. Uh, up to six guaranteed category leads, 120 leads, and all that stuff, right? So use it to gauge, you know, how many stones you want to spend on the uh, double rates Gohan banner, right? So let's say you have 800 stones right now, then maybe set aside 400, 500 for the step up banner, and then use the rest on the Gohan banner or something like that. I mean, obviously, we will be getting more stones over the course of the month as well as into uh, January, but I doubt it's going to be enough free to play stones to do all three rounds so I think it's still important to save some so maybe set aside at least like 300 right now and then use the rest for the Gohan banner or something like that I mean to me I don't think the Gohan banner will be worth more than like 300 stones for most people obviously I'll be spending more but that's for the content and also for my summoning addiction I mean I'll probably spend like a thousand or something like that like nothing too crazy but definitely more than I probably should be spending. But anyways, that's my advice, guys. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys plan to do with your stones as far as this upcoming uh, LR Super Saiyan 2 Gohan banner is concerned. Are you going to be summoning? And if so, how many stones do you plan to spend? And that's it, guys. That is today's video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, 
If you liked the video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button. To join the Tiger Squad now, and while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here. Until next time, hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.